Thanks for locking in with 77 Flavors of Chicago. We're your host, Dario. And I'm Sarah, and I hope you're ready to learn with us. Today, we're talking about a dope Chicagoan that you should know about, uh, Patrick McCoy. Uh, but first, we got some um, pretty fun stuff to talk about as um, far as our week. Um, how are y'all doing? That's amazing. That's, fan- that's we're fantastic, so happy y'all. You're doing so well. Um, actually, I'm I, I'm actually really happy that I'm, you're yeah. having a great summer. Me too. I'm happy that I'm happy we having a great summer. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough about you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? Go ahead and get into this week in Chicago so that we can have our time to talk about no, our no, weekend. No, no, let's let's talk about our weekend. You said, let's talk about the weekend. Yeah, Fuck it. Then we'll get into the history. NASCAR weekend, y'all. I'm sorry, but that was lit. It was. That was absolutely fantastic. Here's here are the, my top things about this this NASCAR weekend as an attendee. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. one, I love that there was a free area. Yeah, NASCAR Village. You can come to it as if you don't have tickets, you could still go in mm-hmm. and kind of experience part of the the vibe. Yeah. Uh, number two, it felt like. A festival mm. it was it is very large mm-hmm. at no point did we feel like it was too many people no there was a ton of food a ton of activities a bathrooms ton of, a ton of bathrooms a ton of water um and some concerts going on and then obviously the races were amazing um we were also very lucky because we were invited by nascar so we got access to the content pod so we had like a place when it started raining sunday night yeah we had a place to sit inside but um mind y'all up until that rain yeah, yeah. i feel like it, it was, was a perfect weekend great weather <laughs> it was such good weather man the saturday race was fantastic i mean yeah. it's sunny you know like yeah. the hot it felt good yeah, uh, i got sunburnt a little man look it was it was sunny up until literally literally they started their engines and it got cloudy unreal and it started to drizzle. Believable. After like lap two, I think it was like it started raining. Man, after, I mean, what the hell? Like it was a perfect day all the way until. And y'all mind y'all, we are literally recording this after we just got back from NASCAR. Uh, we still got our, our bands on, our little party bands. <laughs> we did shower though. We did. We we had to shower because like no, ain't no way in the world I was sitting do a podcast with you. Well, both us smelling like I know hot booty ass. Hot booty hot ass. Booty ass. Man, that's different. Hot ass booty. Hot ass booty. <laughs> that's still different. Um, I'll say I know a lot of people have very like varying opinions on NASCAR. Yeah. But don't count it out. For real. <laughs> it's a very well executed event. What? And I know it sucks. It sucks that the roads are closed. Um, they did cut the setup time in half. Uh, also, they didn't ask us to talk about this shit on this podcast. Yeah, we were right. just talking about this it. Is this, a, this, this is op-ed right here. But they literally <laughs> cut this. Last last year, they took a month to set up. This year, it took two weeks. Which, uh, which uh, obviously, the streets were not uh, cut off for two weeks. But yeah. Aside from all that, we as Chicago have been saying we don't want to get it. We've been split on it. Some people are like, yeah, let's bring it. Other people are like, we don't want that there. I, I'll be honest. The ones that say we don't want it here, I know there's there's there may be other things that we can allocate money, but there's a yeah. there's, that's a that's a, a situation we could do. But the city anytime. made a shit ton yeah. of money. Yeah, and, I mean, like, but that's a conversation for anything that we do in the city. Are we not supposed to have fun? Yeah. I, th- the point that I'm trying to make: this is such a great event. It's a great look for Chicago. I mean, the execution on this, you had to be there. You know what I mean? Especially, you know, one thing that, that really stood out, too, besides the execution, like the taste of Chicago, please take note. This is how you do it. <laughs> like, like I, this, this is fantastic. Yeah, don't get me started. But they like taste of Chicago. This is how you do it. But what they did was make you feel welcomed. Like yeah. you, they're inviting you into the world of NASCAR. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? Like and there's a lot of like like while you're listening to them talking about it there's a lot of like hey if this is your first time attending yeah here is how you get you enjoy this you know what i yeah. mean so this was our first time i've never been to a nascar race yeah. before as a as a I first time i didn't think i would enjoy it personally but i literally got goosebumps when uh the race ended it was it was yeah. a lot of fun it was i intense. really had a great time you can actually like with even with ga tickets you can see the race very close very well like you don't need to be in the bleachers you don't need to be sitting anywhere 
um, it was cool. Just and I think that's that's shout out to Chicago being laid out the way it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Chicago it's is just such a cool race. Like, yeah, we are the only street race, which is like so iconic. I, we sold y'all. I mean, like th- this is an experience that it is. Man, I'm I'm telling you, Chicago got the first I'm one. I'm not trying to sell you because you can have your opinion. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, you can't have your opinion, but I'm I'm telling you, I say at least go there. You got to go there before you have a like a solid opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I think one of the other things that people were talking about is that it destroys grant park like the trees and stuff like that but let the, i don't know how true that is let the bulls know. let the bulls uh win the championship i know they're going okay win. but yeah yeah lala lala sucks let, yeah let, let and let, that shit let let any it, let anyone in chicago uh <laughs> let any one of the chicago teams win the championship i know promise you y'all gonna be down there I know. and i ain't gonna be saying shit about no jam trees and, and messing up uh, the jam grant trees. Park. you know what i'm saying so um but no that's that's my little thing man look nask shout out to nascar Y'all snap with this one, like this. Yeah. Woo! They really, they really did. Touch and here's it. It the thing: so now good. about the race, <laughs> about the about our experience. But forget all the other shit, man. Look, we was it. We were on the the racetrack, like in pit road, y'all. Like we were in pit road. That was so wild. Wild. Yeah. Like what? How did that feel? Like that shit was crazy to uh, me. I'm literally like a regular person. I don't know who let me in there. And we up here talking to uh, <laughs> we have right. We up me too. Shit, we up here talking to the pit crew team. Yeah, I'm and asking shit. them questions and shit. Talking about why are these tires textured? Yeah, right. I and mean, he, like, like literally stood there and explained it to me for like ten minutes. He like told me all about the tires. So nice. Like, they so were all nice. so dope. Yeah. To like talk. I mean, the people that we talked to, we ain't talked to everybody, but right. we talked to a lot of them. Nobody turned away. Dario. Uh, Lifted some of the the tires. Man, they let me throw tires around and shit. (laughs) Like you can check out. I I put all of our stories in our highlight as NASCAR weekend. If you want to go see our, yeah, go check it out. Um, but yeah, we had a great time. But other than that, it was it was a good week. That was great week. That was I'm tired. That's the highlight. Yeah, we yeah we tired. We got we got a busy one coming up, man. Um. Uh, birthday. My birthday it's is uh. Mario's birthday. Yeah, yeah. This on, week. on yeah, this week is gonna be fun. I, that, that's that's crazy that that went second. Forty. Yeah, for forty piece, boy. That's crazy. You know, black man doing beautiful things out here. <laughs> you know, for real. Forty piece. Uh, thank y'all for the happy birthdays whenever y'all give them to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you uh, Sarah keep on being like, yo, what you trying to do, man? Everybody, everybody around me, like, what you trying to do? I'm like, man, I'm trying to chill, man. Well, oh, that's what you do all the time is chill. Yeah, I know. Well, I want to chill more. The the older I get, the more I want to chill. That's ridiculous. But also, uh, I am <laughs> about to have a curated exhibit. At the Howard Washington. At, at the Harold 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 Washington. You said Howard. Howard Washington. <laughs> at the Harold, Harold Washington, Washington Library. Y'all. Crazy. Y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, God damn it. Oh, my God. God. Yeah, that's just us. That's just us, though. Yeah. There it is. I think my ears matter after all, two days of cars. Yeah, <laughs> good point. That's a good point. Um, Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so y'all go check it out. You'll be able to check it out, I believe, all the way through the end of August and a little bit of September. First week of September right until. Uh, Do you know what floor uh, it's going to be on? Grand. Grand entrance. Oh, nice. We in the grand interest, baby. Nice. You enter on Plymouth, and there you go. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. Plymouth free, or, right? or State. It don't see matter. it for free. Yeah, free. Yeah, it's free. Um, it, it's, it's a great exhibit. Also, well, y'all not going to be able to get the book, but there's going to be a book that I created also that will be part of the special collections that after this is all done. They're going to mm. be like, let's archive this. So your boy is going to be archivable. Archivable, you know, <laughs> archivable, archivable. <laughs> uh, so great week coming up uh, for yeah. my birthday week. I'm That's I'm blessed, man. Happy to have people around me that that care and uh, keep me going. But anyway, uh-huh. today in uh, this week in Chicago history, this what we Chicago got? Chicago history. I got one that's actually on your birthday. Oh, talk to me. Um, Freedom Rally at Soldier Field mm. by uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, July tenth, nineteen sixty six. Okay. Freedom crazy. Rally, huh? Yeah. Yeah, this, he was living in Chicago at this point. At Soldier Field, yeah. Dang. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I do have a couple for this week. It was a it's a it's a decent week in Chicago history. There's a ton, but I'm just I just picked three. Yeah. Um 1978, the um the Fine Arts Building on July seventh became a historic landmark. Oh wow. It's a very cool building. If you guys haven't been there, it's right on Michigan. Yeah, right across um, the street from um the, the Art, Art Institute. Institute. Yeah. It's a very, very cool building. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then lastly, Disco Demolition, July ah, 12th. Yes. Yes. Socks. Do Socks you, said, fuck I, that. I know you weren't. Uh, were you alive? No, you weren't. Uh, no, not. For, yes, I was. Were you? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I think I was laughing. No, it. you weren't. Nineteen seventy nine. Oh, so, ah, just before. Um, I thought that was. Do you do you have any like? Did your parents tell you anything about that? Do you have any stories? I still don't think my parents went to the game. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, I, I know my dad. I know my dad. Uh, <laughs> well, your family are Cubs fans. Yeah, but my dad is a so. sports fan, right, so like right, right. he. He was kind of aware yeah. of what's going on. But, well, if people yeah. don't know what disco demolition is, do you want to tell us what it is? Yeah, basically, they were sick of like disco and they sound. And, they, and so they brought, so people brought records yeah. <laughs> to Soldier Field and literally on the field after the game, burned them. Yeah. So it actually was, uh, it was a promotion. Yeah. That Steve Dahl, yeah. he, uh, he was a DJ for WLUP mm-hmm. um, and he, did not like disco music, so he, he just hated destroyed. Um, uh, during his show, he actually demoed a bunch of records, yeah. And so it was called Disco Demolition. <laughs> very, very odd. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. But sure, it's Chicago be doing yeah. smart things, man. Very odd things. We All do. right, ten minutes on the head. Let's get into this episode. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, so today uh, we have a conversation with uh, Patrick McCoy. Now here's the thing. Patrick McCoy is, uh, and so great that we get to highlight Chicagoans yes. on this podcast uh, in this fashion. Fantastic uh, conversation, as you're going to hear. Super. But uh, how we, you know, even found out about him is we were at Daisy's Po' Boy for uh, Chef Christian Hunter and uh, Chef Eric Williams. He collab. hosts the, the, they had a, a collab Po' Boy. Boy, po Boy, po Boy of the Month. And, um, you know, all of a sudden we're sitting there, right, enjoying the moment, enjoying the moment. Uh, and I hear Chef says, y'all, before we get started, we got two people I want to shout out in the audience uh, that's out here, that's in the building tonight. Uh, one, this brother is um, on, uh, He's he's been, he's like, what did he say? Something he about. like he's been featured on uh, the most. Well, well no, no, he's, he's a hot dog. comedian. No, that's what yeah, he said. Yeah. He said he's a hot comedian in the city. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, who is he talking about? Because like. I, who is the high comedian? I'm I'm so glad he in the building. And so you know, my, and then he mentioned high on the. And hog. then he said high on the hog, and I'm sitting there like, oh, he talking about me. He was like, he's like, man, y'all give it up for. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is chef didn't even have to do that. I almost broke at out all. of tears. He really didn't have to at all, man. And and then he does the same thing. He's like, and then the next guy is another dude that y'all need to know. He has a the he said he has the most highest most collected uh the largest black, collection of black black art. In, uh, in a house, and um, you know, obviously, that's not statistically right. Who knows? But it, 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 you'll hear in this conversation, it Shit might be possible. Um, and so, the, so he, you know, he was uh, like, "Yo, what?" Didn't even know Patrick McCoy was the other guy. And so, Sarah and I were like, "Man, we got to talk to him, um, and you know, see if we can get him on the podcast." Went up to him and uh, asked him to be on the podcast, and it was such a, a great moment that we even like met this guy, yeah. right? And um, had him on the podcast. We're able to sit down now. What you're going to hear is us talking to Patrick McCoy. In his home. In his home, y'all. Yeah. Talking about how, you know, he collected all this. His yeah. his career. You want to tell him yeah, a little yeah. bit about who he is? So, um, it, he has a very long career. And he's actually, his his part of his career was as a scientist. Mm-hmm. And uh Part of his career was as a photographer. Um, he Found is an that out artist. Later. So he, he's a multifaceted uh, human being that's just very, very cool. Full, has a thousand and one stories that um, just we amazing. Uh, couldn't possibly capture in an hour. But we tried our best. To, I had like one million questions for him. But um, I know this is an audio medium, so it's kind of hard to imagine what this looks like. But I will describe it to you. Okay? You enter this home. And every square inch of this house is full of art. Every. Like, l- there every. is no empty space. Every. E- including the ceiling. Wall, including the ceiling. Including the ceiling, yeah. Uh, there's a full bike hanging from the ceiling full. in the kitchen. Okay? So, uh, the bathrooms, the actually the hallways leading up to the apartment, um, the bedroom, the uh, outdoor patio, the the apartment is fully full of art okay? everything and it's multimedia art mm-hmm. so it's not just like paintings it's paintings it's photographs sculptures it's, sculptures, it's literally random everything. shit uh, like not random but you i mean know. i mean it's it's a very it, and it just it's absolutely beautiful and yeah i can't wait for you to hear this conversation i think you're going to fall in love with patrick just how we did mm-hmm. um such a fun guy such a fun guy Absolutely. The best part about this conversation is one that we didn't even, not the best part, another great part of this conversation, 
is the one we had when he had two more guests come over uh, yeah. as we like ended the podcast after he gave us the tour. And uh, we had like another hour long conversation with <laughs> Two, people, two two more Chicago artists yeah uh, well one Chicago artist and one artist visiting from Texas yeah um that were there performing they would perform together that weekend um and so it was just Fantastic. such an incredible time like truly eye opening I think the one thing that stuck with me is you can you can live with art mm. um and I, I he's gonna explain that more in this conversation uh, I think his story is very important and super I hope he inspires you. He inspired me, um, he, like for real. As a photographer, he yeah. inspired me. Yeah. Like I was, I'm, I'm different because of him. I'll be yeah. honest, I am. But I, I agree. So enjoy this, uh, enjoy this conversation. Let's get it. Pretty chill. Yeah, pretty chill. Yeah, we we look. This is not, this is, not a news. Yeah, yeah. This is your home. We yeah. This we, uh, we want to show you how we how you live. You know what I mean? Like, we're listen, not trying to be. Yeah, we're not trying to come up here. All right, now move all this out the way. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> no, <laughs> clear. Clear the space. Okay. So yeah, this is this is uh first of all, thank you for allowing us in here. You know what I'm saying? Like honestly, this is I think this is only our second time being in somebody's home in three years. For real? For real. Well, not like in general, but just to record. Yeah, yeah, to oh, record. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is our only second time ever. Oh. So we no, appreciate I'm, it. I'm always having people here all the time. Yeah. You, this on Sunday. I mean you live in a museum. Yeah, Did right. You know that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's the opposite. Okay. Is that I want you to know you can live with art. Mm. Mm. I want people to know that you can live with art because yeah. most people have this real strange and Ill, incorrect belief that art is for elite right. mm. set of people. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, you, you can live. You yeah. can live with it. It's not for the elite. It's yeah. for the average, everybody. Right. And that it's something that. You can continue to do exactly what you want to do. Mm-hmm. It's not a problem. Yeah. Right. Like parties, brunches, just all that kind of stuff. Just right. You can do that. Yeah. 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 Art is, doesn't require you. you got to have white right, gloves right. and all yeah, that. Yeah, right. no, Get that. No. Yeah. Um, I, think I think I just broke something earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got enough to uh, replace. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, I, think, I think one thing that always scared me about art personally is that People tend to judge what is good art, right? And I and I never related to what good art was. Like mm-hmm. I never saw the vision, mm-hmm. especially with contemporary okay, art. I right. think it's really hard for me to mm-hmm. kind of like understand because what it's th- incorrect. That's mm. a fa- it's a false concept. Right, yeah. right. The, what the good art is a false concept. Right. right. What is good music? Right. right. Exactly. What's good music? It's what you like. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know that there's. A whole lot of other people that like something, mm-hmm. they, they like some music, that's good music for them. Yeah. That doesn't, the fact that y'all don't have the same taste, taste right. doesn't bother you, right? Right, right. no. Right, no. No. It is no, why, nobody, like theirs has got to pre, 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 uh, pre, be predominant over yours. Yeah. No, it isn't. Right. Yeah. Music is egalitarian. Right. Mm-hmm. That's we have right. created this false yeah. elitism right. associated with art when right. it's yeah. not right. true. Right. Right. right, right, So you 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 right on point. Yeah. Yeah. Is that you're not supposed to be uh, accepting that somebody's telling you something is good right. and it don't look good to you. Right, 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 right. right. Or or what you perceive it to be. Right. You know what I mean? Like, That's right. You know what I mean? Like the artist, yeah. artist is going to have their thought process, but if I see it, it might trigger a memory. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? They, exactly. You know, we, uh, the George O'Keefe uh, exhibit just opened at the Art Institute, and the first thing we said, we saw the exhibit as a whole. Remember, we were in Barcelona. It reminds us of Picasso. And so that feeling that I got as soon as, I was like, this is cool. You know what I mean? Like, it feels good. And I'm not, Talking about the meaning of what it was, it's just a feeling like that the it actual, had. Actual, you know, yeah, the, the way space, it, yeah, it just yeah, felt right. good. It, it brought me back to a, a place that I, I, I had fun in, you know. And I, and I think the the one thing that I I really enjoy about Chicago specifically is that there's a lot of public art. Mm-hmm. We did a Richard Hunt piece mm-hmm. uh, of we covered a little bit about his life, and I didn't realize how much we're surrounded by Richard Hunt art everywhere. And like these sculptures are everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, no, everywhere. And he's, well, he's the most. Uh, uh, most celebrated sculptor. He has to get mm-hmm. the most work out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
he's definitely a prolific. Mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Also, <laughs> he's all over the world, too. Right, and, and the idea that there is public art that you can enjoy for free is also kind of yeah. like a liberating feeling that yeah. it doesn't have to be in a, in a, a snooty art yeah. gallery right. somewhere. Well, right. let's, let's turn this around again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It starts with public art. Right. Mm. Art has always been, from the beginning, was public, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's about, look at me, I'm the king, I'm the pharaoh, I'm the whatever. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So it's true. always right. been right. public that's first. So true. Yeah. It starts out being public. It's only in later when they bring it inside. Right, mm. right. So how do, I know, uh, I didn't want to read too much about your life because I wanted this a conversation to be kind of organic, but I know that you started out as a scientist, right? That was like yeah. what you, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, but like- The most modest. Right. You know? <laughs> the most modest. I mean, you, you went to like some of the best schools for, for that and then, but how do you, usually people tend to like put themselves in a box yeah. of like, I'm, I'm an engineer and that is all I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I feel like this year for me, I've been trying to like break Branch out of that yeah. box. I've been doing a lot more like creative stuff. So how did you even get start started in like collecting art or appreciating it, appreciating it or learning about it? Was it something you always liked? Do these things go hand in hand? Are people wrong about scientists being boring <laughs> per se? Yes, a I lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to ask, answer something uh, to you know, the very last part. Science and art are the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, the mind has to do, do the same type of activities mm. to figure mm. out something scientifically as to feel, figure out something artistically. Mm. Okay. Mm. And That's art is the is the root mm. of all of it. Mm. How so? Art, science, and all that stuff comes out of art. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In yeah. fact, our institutions still recognize that mm -hmm. mm. when they give you a degree. Mm. They give you a Bachelor of the Arts right. of the thing. Right. Yeah, right. right. So you have to first learn the art of the thing. Right. Mm. <laughs> well, that's like right, you get right. the master of the art you of the thing. The, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because I guess the word art isn't even like tied to a picture or this or painting. Or yeah. It's just right. like, yeah. It's yeah. about a way of thinking right. about something. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Which right. meant that art and science are, comes out of that. Mm -hmm. They're the yeah. same thing. In fact, science comes out of art. Right. So there's not a problem for me to, to, to meld those two. They always have been melded. But to answer your more specific question mm -hmm. of me as a how mm -hmm. I did yeah. I was born in it. Mm -hmm. I was born in art uh, on 63rd Street. Yeah, yeah. And my father was a frustrated artist, photographer, mm -hmm. designer, all around just a uh, creative. creative person. And my yeah. mother's also. Uh, I, and so the world that I was born into mm -hmm. was rich with mm -hmm. visual imagery mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Right, right. Uh, from the very beginning. Right. I was born at home. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, you had oh, the wow. hospital stuff. No, yeah, you cut all that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was born at home, yeah. so I was born right into it, yeah. into the world with his paintings and his photographs and yeah. my mother's work and all the books. Wow. And all. So I was born right into right. that. Mm -hmm. So I've always looked at it, always yeah. had it. Uh, uh, an environment of visual right. stimulation, right? Mm -hmm. And and as a as a black man, a lot of times we don't have that opportunity. You know what I mean? To be, have that kind of exposure that early on. You know what I mean? If you say it like an opportunity, like you could have chosen that, right? I would say, yeah, that's it's kind of correct. Yeah. But it's just that we have been acculturated right. different right. way. Right. 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 Uh, if we were left back into on the, the African continent, we would have been... Like, that was the way it was. Yes, yes. you would have been yeah. acculturated. Right. And yeah. You would have seen visual things right in, in your world from right. the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we've been removed from it, and so we're now, uh, in the last 200 years, trying to catch up right. And, right. Build, and rebuild a culture, right. a visual culture for yeah. ourselves. And that's why I'm a promote, proponent of promoting the visual arts culture mm -hmm. in the African-American mm -hmm. community. Now, we're we're starting afresh, yeah. and we're starting with all kinds of influences, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's going to be a hodgepodge. It's going to be yeah. a, a thing. And so I'm just telling people to just be comfortable with the concept that if you see something you like, mm -hmm. bring it into your world. Yes, that's all it is. You know, I, I, I think you know a lot of people ask us about the podcast, and we we consider this definitely an art, right? And you know, how do you do this? How do you do that? And, and it's kind of like how you said. Look, 
we were thrust into this spotlight and like we had to learn real quick. I can't we tell you that we, I studied I this. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can't tell you that, hey, yeah, you know right. what? Go right. ahead and do this. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, right. but what we can tell you is that that passion, you have to have like a, a, a preamble. And we had a lot of preamble building up to what we created. And it sounds like you had that preamble, especially, you know, when it comes to, you know, I think art helps science out probably if I'm more accurate to say that for you, oh, yeah. you had that preamble to yeah. kind of go that direction. Yeah, I wanted to be an artist originally. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because well, my, my father painted. I, That's what you painted, knew. I painted, you see him. And so if you see your parents doing something that's mm. that's going to have right. a dramatic effect right. on you. Right. You know, right. you want to do what they do. So how come you didn't? I started in like middle school and high school, started taking science classes, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. It. I really did. What science class was it that, that did it for you? It had to be chemistry, right? Yeah, this yeah, yeah chemistry. Yeah, the, the the whole introduction to that the world is made of things, mm -hmm. and yeah. you can understand how these things interact to create the other things and so right. forth. I was fascinated by that. You know what's interesting? Um, it, we got a we got a couple similarities. Orange is your favorite color, right? Mm -hmm. Orange is my favorite color, <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, so, uh, this is this is not by accident. Uh, okay. <laughs> but um, when you talk about like science in particular in school, I can't sit here and say I was the best kid because it's on camera. Somebody gonna call me out. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, one thing I was exceptional at was biology okay. and I loved uh, I also loved chemistry also so those two mm -hmm. were so good and I told you this story I was so good at like biology and chemistry that I had like that was the only thing in my life I had a straight A in mm -hmm. didn't miss any points or anything mm -hmm. but I was also such a tyrant that before I would walk in class sometimes the teacher would say she would stop me outside and be like other kids got to learn today I can't. I ain't got time for you. Okay. And this is so easy for you. You need to calm down. Like, and I'm and, and I'd be like, I'm good today. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm fine. And, but it's just funny hearing you say that that was a passion of yours. I didn't follow. I didn't have any interest in like science. But I had the interest of think the world is made of things. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that's very fascinating that you uh, kind of took that and I didn't ran with that. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I was more of a talker. I was mm -hmm. too concerned with talking. Okay. Yeah. Storyteller. Yeah, yeah. Story. I was. Yeah. Storytelling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a comedian also, mm. so I like I like telling stories. So this is this is in my wheelhouse. But I mean, it's like biology makes sense because that's really yeah. the story of how things are. Yeah. Yeah. To exist. Love biology. Yeah. 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 Uh, my grandmother contributed a lot to my uh, subsequent career in the mm. environmental scientist. Mm -hmm. You know that. She took us early on out into the nat natural world and pointed out things and said, you can use this and you can do that and this is how mm -hmm. this works. So it, it, it was uh, sort of an indoctrination by, yeah. mm -hmm. by yeah. the elders. Yeah. Right. They, they teach you. Mm -hmm. And I can see how in other parts of the world that that's how they pass the information right. on. They take the little kids out there and show them. You can eat this. You, this is what this right. is for. Smell this. Well, taste this. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. I think that's that. like the most basic form of education it is really like is. going out into the world and being like this Touch is it, tangible yeah. Yeah, that's right. you know what I mean that's, that's and then and kids are going to be watching right. everything they watch which is even in the art world yeah I love for kids to come here mm -hmm. yeah love for them because they see things different than we do right. well, a lot different yeah. and so you don't tell them what to see you ask them what do they see what right. do you see yeah, yeah. right mm -hmm. you know it's it's Man, that's crazy because, like, even as adults, if we free our mind, we have that same thought process. Right. You know, start photography, and I, I said, I was like, man, I see the whole world differently. It's like it's the world is a picture. You know that's what I mean? Right. Like, I, everything is yeah. everything is a, is an opportunity. That's and, right. And uh, like kids, especially, I can only imagine coming to a place like this and, and being like, <laughs> what oh, do you see? this is what do you see? What don't I see? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like what the. Um, so I know you said it's important to, to you to let people know that they can live with art, mm -hmm. right? But um, wh what kind of, like, did you ever think that your collection would be this large? This is massive. Was this always your goal, that you wanted to be surrounded by art this way? No, that's, or it's an organic. Mm -hmm. the, the development of this is organic. Uh, but the part of your question where you said uh, about being surrounded by it, well, I grew up with it being mm -hmm. surrounded mm -hmm. by it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is a natural, that's mm -hmm. a normal state right. Right. for me. Yeah. So everywhere I go, I'm going to do mm -hmm. that because yeah. that's what I've seen from the very beginning. That's right. what you know. It's, it's like to see yeah. art all the way around. Right. Uh, so 
but no, I wasn't expecting to mm. create uh, a collection like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Though it is not outside of the realm mm -hmm. of right. what would have happened even if I wasn't thinking right. about it. So I, I was always going to be acquiring, seeing something right. I like and I'm going to bring it home. Yeah. 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 And when we met you, Chef Eric said that you have the largest collection of black slash African-American art. Is that he correct? He said that. Yeah, yeah. Is that I did correct? not say that. <laughs> do, do you think that's correct? No. No? No way. As an individual, you think someone has a larger collection oh, than most this? Most certainly. Most certainly. See, I the, want to find out who. But, but, yeah. but the fact is that, remember we started out about uh, this elitism? Right, yeah. right, right. Well, there's so many people that buy into that. Mm. Oh, and when they buy into it, a component of the elitism mm -hmm. concept is a very in strong interest in security and privacy. Mm -hmm. So mm. a lot of people that have some amazing collections, you will never see it. Mm -hmm. You won't know about so it. So you don't even How know what they have, right? That's right. You right. don't, you don't even know what they have. So I don't never claim that this is the yeah. largest. Is it, uh, even in this city, I'm sure right. there are people that right. have much more than you. But they're not going to tell you. Right, right. And that's that's kind of sad. It is. Well... What's well, the point of art if, like, no one can see it? Why are you... What is the point of billionaires? Right. Right. What is the point of billionaires? Right. <laughs> right. That's really... Right. Right. That's, that's, right. It's a whole other... You can't spend it all. Why you know, like, are you a billionaire? You can't spend it all. Yeah, right. What is it? Multi-billionaire. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, let alone a single. For what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so, but it's the same thing. Right. It's that there are people that, they just accumulate. They're not collecting. They're accumulating. Right. Yeah. Accumulate, right, 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 right. Accumulating things. Mm. Uh, mm. And they... And they have, I don't know if it's a passion or, or is it a, um, some sort of malignant behavior because mm -hmm. right. they just keep doing it way beyond the point of mm -hmm. making any kind of sense right. for a human being. Right. So, uh, I, with my collection, my interest now is for people to see it. Mm -hmm. I want to share it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm even to the point of recognizing that after I die, I still want people to have mm. the ability to see this. Yeah. Is it is a generosity that right. comes out mm. of that, of wanting to uh, be altruistic. Mm. These folks, I feel like they have a problem where that that is not their intent. Right. Mm. Is it ever to be go back into the right. public? Right. You know, is that I want to die still grabbing for another dollar, you mm, know? Mm. <laughs> Even you can't. So, you know, what a sad life. Yeah, right. It is. Right. Hey, with art. You know, which yeah. is crazy, like, right. it, because art is supposed to be free. Right. You know? But <laughs> like, th those are the people that are only buying that piece of art because someone somewhere to said brag that about the it. value yeah. of that yeah. is high. Oh, that's 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 worth right. $10,000 yes, right there, and so I got it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. It, it, yeah, it, that's very true. Yeah. The, what's, what's your process of, get like, acquiring art now do you just walk into galleries and see what you well, like or do you have your specific spots that you go to or i would say let's because i want to that question but also how did how did where was the change of how this started for you like well, what was said it's always well i know it's always been with you but like at some point you had you had five pieces and then five turned to ten and then ten turned to twenty <laughs> you know what i mean like like and now there's you, like five thousand yeah, yeah. so, pieces so, in so here? how did yeah. it snowball like what was that moment that time where you were like you know what this is this is the intentionality of this purpose right okay uh my first piece i got in 1968 when i was in college mm -hmm. and my and got it from my roommate and that's when I say that I became an art collector mm -hmm. mm. because I asked him after he showed it to me and I said, oh, I like that. I asked him if it was for sale. Mm. Now, you guys are not old enough to realize what 1968 was. No. Mm. And that... Very tumultuous. Uh, we didn't have no money. Right. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And definitely, if I'm in college, I ain't got no money. Yeah. Right. So why am I asking anybody if they have something for sale. Right. I just like, didn't even, but. <laughs> Priorities all in the wrong place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Always like, what is going on here? Uh, so we agreed on $10 and I scraped it up some kind of way and paid it. That was a lot of money in mm -hmm. 1968. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I, I continued to acquire mm -hmm. art after that, I was, I was a young person and we were going into the the period where we call the black arts mm -hmm. movement, mm -hmm. the the whole 
Black Power Movement yeah. and so forth. So we were being shown all kinds of stuff that was, for young people, reflected just like uh, Black Lives Matter is right. for these younger people today yeah. and all. And we were in that, yeah. and part of it was to acquire things that spoke to spoke that, to you. To that yeah. period and that spirit. So I was acquiring art all during that time period. Some of those pieces that I acquired have turned out to be very, very important in the in, in the visual arts culture mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. As it, uh, these pieces are collected now. Yeah. But I was getting it because it was just part of what young people were doing. Right, right, right. right. Uh, so I, I was accumulating and acquiring art all during that time period. And again, my whole upbringing was such that that would be a natural because I grew up with art being in my environment. Yeah. But I did not ex think of myself as an art collector. Mm. So for decades, mm -hmm. I was acquiring art but resisting saying that I was an art collector. Right. Now, uh, you asked the question about how did uh, five become 10 and so yeah. forth. I'm seeing that that is a natural mm -hmm. phenomenon. We collected comic books, mm -hmm. dolls, yeah. marbles. We, human beings just collect. We just collect, yeah. yeah. We yeah. Just he has yeah. like like three thousand comic, yeah, comic books. That's right. Yeah. How did you get there? That's right. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> well, I gotta follow the story. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it was good stories. You know, <laughs> right. I collected comic books back in the day, um, too. But so I, I always find it amazing and interesting that people would ask me, "How do you do that?" When I know if I go into their world, they're collecting stuff. Right, right, right. right. Your stuff is just on display. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very much on display. So uh, it was only, to answer the other part of that question, it's only around 2000, the year 2000, mm. that I started to really understand and accept right. that I actually was an art collector. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So from 68 to, to the year 20, 2000, 2000, you didn't wow. consider yourself a collector. I actually resisted it. Wow. I would tell people I was not an art collector. Why? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Huh? Why? Why? What's yeah. the connotation with that? What is yeah? What was your thought process as to is saying no? Because I believed what I think most people believe that art collector is a very elite status gotcha. position gotcha. and Understood. so forth, and I wasn't that. Mm -hmm. Right. So therefore, I said no. I'm not an art collector. Mm -hmm. I'm not rich. Which right. Is the first thing that people think. Right. In fact, somebody said that earlier today. Is that you rich? You know, because because you got art. Yeah. No, I ain't rich. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, and we talked about. I'm not a very private person. I'm not concerned about security and, and all that other stuff. Uh, I want people to see this. Right. Mm. I want to share it. I also believed at that time, and I think a lot of people believe this, that in order to say that you're an art collector, you have to know something right. about art. Right, oh. right. You didn't. You didn't feel like you knew I much. I studied chemistry. And right. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> See, that's that was my reservation yeah. also. Is that right. I didn't know right. why I liked something. I okay. just liked and it. Okay. And then I had to go, and this is around 2000. I had to have the epiphany of that. That statement is totally illogical. Mm. Mm. It mm. is so wrong. It's ridiculous. Right. Right. What? Because we all, as we just said earlier. We all love music. Right, right, right. What do you have to know right. about music? Right, right, right. To like right. it it's, and it's, to acquire it. You don't true. have to know a damn thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. right. You right. don't have to yeah. know how to play it. You right. don't have to know music theory. You don't know how to have to sing. Right. You don't have to know none of that right. stuff. Right, yeah. right. But you love it and you collect it. Mm. So, so when I saw that and I said, something's wrong. Yeah. Why am I believing this right. when that's not true? Mm. Mm. You don't need to know a thing. <laughs> If you're not blind, then you have all that you need. Yeah. If you can right. see. Right. right. You can see. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you can see yeah. and you look at something, I'll say, oh, I like that. That's, That's all it. you need. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah. That's yeah. all you need. Wow. So I just feel like uh, that's around 2000 is yeah. when I re recognized that I've been believing all this wrong stuff. Mm, mm. Mm. And then uh, that the fourth thing was that about investment, that I did believe that you had to be involved in this investment concept. Right. You had to be constantly worried about what this thing is worth right. and, uh, in dollars. Yeah. And I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah, no. Right. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Right, right. You changed your whole thought process. Yes, and right. You realize this is, you've been doing this for years. You yes, just right. love it. Yes, you, right. you just love it. And that's, what's, that's all that's necessary. Yeah. Right. 
And that, that spreads to a lot of people, though. It makes sense when you invite people into the home. You know, it's amazement when you see it. And, and mm -hmm. we'll have some clips and everything out here. But it's even better in real life. You know what right. I mean? Like, it, it is. is. It is. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Like, uh, it's it's almost like I, I'm... I'm in this conversation, I'm listening to you, but right. truly, like, my yeah. pastoral right. vision, right. I am so, yeah. like, I just want to look at every single piece right. because you have some really incredible things here. And you know what just sitting here made me realize? Um, so, Dari's a photographer, we have a lot of photos up in our home, and I'm always, like, worried, oh, would this match with the aesthetic of right. the house? If I add these pieces, and truly, it doesn't matter I at know. all. No, matching like, is absolutely insane. Yeah. It's yeah. not... It's not a thing. In fact, remember I told you my grandmother used to took me, take me out into nature. Nature is a cacophony of all kinds of things and it all works. Right. right. And right. doesn't worry right. about that. Right. Right. They're not worried about this color don't go that, with that, that yet. It doesn't matter. It's right. just like, yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All of that works. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and with this concept of matching is a, a false one. Because the way that we look at things mm -hmm. is that we focus on what we're looking at and everything else disappears. So mm -hmm. it's not about making right. sure that this goes with that. Is that you're, when you look at something, you look right. at that thing right. and everything right. else disappears. Right. 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 right, right, that's so true. Right. Yeah. And then you move and look at another thing. Yeah. Right. So right. it doesn't have to go there. Yeah. That's, this concept of that it has to match, to me, is boring. Right. Just absolutely boring. But, um, Sorry. I, no, I was going to say along those lines, I, if, if this is going to just jump ahead of me, but I was going to say along those lines, though, do you there? I know I'm, I'm assume that there's no rhyme or reason, you know, more well, uh, to the location. That's kind of what I was going to say. Yeah, here? What I was... Oh, of course there is. Okay. Is okay. that what you like is going to manifest itself right. if you just keep doing a thing. Just right. like you, you like comics, right? Love them. All right. Love them. Do you have every kind of comic book? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Right. No, I don't. So you get you. So you start to yeah. follow. Is it even right. though you start out having a, a, a general interest, it starts to fall into sort of mm -hmm. categories right. and so right. forth. So this is organized by themes now right. okay. because yeah. I yeah. start to recognize I'm a drawn drawn to certain things. I'm what just, are those things? Well, one is orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's an orange room in the back. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. We didn't see, we haven't, so people yeah. watching, we haven't gone yet. We haven't yet. seen, we haven't seen it yet. So they probably. Um, well, what I was going to say is, do you, when you're looking for art, well, one, are you looking, do you like go intentionally look for art or is it like sp a, an organic? Yeah, no, it's organic. Not, it, to answer your question, honestly, no. I, I go out and I'm open to look at art, mm -hmm. but I do not go with the intention, oh, I'm going to go out here and buy a piece. No, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that doesn't make any sense to me. That probably but, doesn't align with your thought process. Right. Yeah, but I right. go out, and if I see something, and I like it, I'm, I'm quite willing, if I can afford it, to get it. Mm. Because one of the things that is a very, very un unpleasant experience is to go out to see something that you really like, and you don't get it. Mm. Mm. Ooh, boy. And you will think about that for the rest <laughs> yeah. of your life. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, boy, whoo, I see camera gear and I'm yeah, like, God, exactly. dog, and I want that. <laughs> now I got it. I can't get it yet, you That's know? That's right. That is it. So uh, there are art pieces that I kind of passed on and I've never forgotten them. Mm. Wow. Like, it's, it's something about... Uh, it's something that touches your spirit. Is right. that the reason why you collect it is that you want to have that. You want to have right. it. Always have that. Do you have any uh, ambitions to go back and try to get some of those things? Or so, no, usually they're gone. Oh, they're gone. They're, I yeah. see. they're yeah. gone. Yeah. Is that? That's why I tell people: if you see something you like, get it. Get yeah. it. Do it you right can there. afford it. Get it because yeah. it will it will trouble you right. for the rest yeah. of your life. Right. And that's as a as a person that 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 collects. Right. You you. You don't want that. <laughs> you don't want that because no. because that almost clouds your judgment on everything yeah. else you do have. Yes, that's you know, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I know all too well. I love I love that camera right there. But yeah. let me tell you, I want another one of those. And I'm like, <laughs> that one, like, that turned into a stepchild to me right there. I'm like, hey, I don't care about it. Oh, but it's wow. a great camera though. You know, it's yeah. a great camera. And sometimes you lose sight of like, oh, it's actually still functional. You, you know? know what else? I didn't ever think of putting arts on cabinets and like. 
and on doors and closets and it's and on the ceiling and all that stuff. You know what? This is a condo. Okay. And I bought the condo and I start filling up with art. And then I recognize that I own this. Mm. Right. <laughs> And said, I, I can do whatever planning. I want. Yes, yeah, I can yeah, do yeah. whatever I want with it. This is, yeah. I own this. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to let somebody, some gallerist or museum person or curator say, oh, you've got to have it here and it's got to be this height and it's got to be this. Far. No, yeah. this is mine. I can do what I want with it. So I put I it in where I want. Yeah. yeah. And you have it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I want y'all to understand. It is everywhere. I have, I have never seen. This is uh, an absolute marvel. You know what I mean? Like to yeah. see, it's, 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 and you know what's crazy? It doesn't feel overwhelming at all. You know, at all. Literally, at all. Yeah. I was sitting here. I was like, I, I can imagine how some people might think that this would be like claustrophobic. Yeah. yeah. But truly, it's not. It doesn't. Like, it's, no. And like you said, it's like when you're looking at something that is all you see. You're not right. looking at like I'm not looking at the whole. But yeah. even looking at the whole thing, it just yes, right. it's so impressive. Well, yeah. you look at it as a whole, it almost looks the whole right. Thing is art. It looks right. It looks. It looks. <laughs> Together, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, because which is, that's how we look at nature. Yeah, so right. you're yeah. looking at all of this stuff all at the same time. Yeah, yeah. and it always it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And you it know really what's does. funny? If you if I saw a blank wall here, I'd probably be like, "What's oh, going let's on?" Let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah, I can imagine. I go to people's houses like, "Ooh, this is <laughs> well, don't come over there." We, 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 <laughs> all of our interviews no. got to be here. Then. <laughs> Our house isn't. Hey, he gonna see a blank wall, and I'm yeah, gonna start no, feeling subconscious. I'm at, now, now I'm gonna. Now my intention over the next ten years is to fill all these walls with art. You, yeah, you know, I was saying we we have a so photographer right, and we keep on saying we want to print up uh, my, my, your, some of my work because I take a lot of architecture, landscape, Chicago theme everything right mm -hmm. and uh we we just haven't done it but we will do it and like this is 100 percent inspiration you know i was a photographer oh yeah oh, really? what, did you, what what didn't, didn't you do that? no I you're a cyclist a Cy photographer, right, cyclist photographer a scientist wait a minute you didn't know, i thought that's what you were getting here for no we thought the art was the thing no last year <clears throat> start the start the show over let's go <laughs> <laughs> so as a photographer yeah, yeah as a, right, right tell us about the first time <laughs> Um, last year, I got a lot of acclaim for my photographs that I took back in nineteen in the nineteen eighties, mm -hmm. and I had, in fact, five shows last year. What? Yeah. What? One at six five nine Wrightwood. Uh, my photographs were at the Lyric Opera. This <laughs> <laughs> we love the Lyric Opera. <laughs> were we, you there for Champion? We haven't. We didn't go for Champion. We did a whole episode on them though, but we haven't gone. Did you go to Aida? Yes. Yes. Love it. They were up for Aida. They, they were? were in the lobby. My photograph, twenty-something photographs. We did see we did. them. We had we to. We them. we had to. Because she said, "Go in the intermission. Go yes. look at the, go look at the at, yeah. a gallery." Yeah. We definitely go saw those. Yes. Wow. Right. Wow. Now, remember, I said my father was a photographer. Uh -huh. and right. He was back in the fifties. He had Hasselblad. I'm like, how are you doing that? Because we living in two rooms and he could barely eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. I know how it go. Cold hot dogs. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> I, I, I'm exaggerating. We, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but so I was. I grew up with photography, and uh, so my father was very into it, and my older brother he was too. And I couldn't get along with either one of them. We was talking about <laughs> trying to do something. Uh, so, but I had a knack for it, uh -huh. and then, then I found out that it's been in our family forever. My yeah. great grandmother, really? my grandmother, both of them, all of them had the little brownie instamatics back wow. in the, yeah. the wow. end of the century. And they took photographs of everything. Wow. Everywhere they went, they had photographs. I got tons of photographs. Oh my God. So I recognized, after the fact, I recognized that I just had it in me to photograph yeah. things. Wow. So I had the little point and shoot camera through the 60s and 70s and I'm taking pictures of everywhere I go and all kinds. And my buddy who went into photography, uh, Ken Hester, he worked at Helix, and he said, you need to get you a 35 millimeter camera. You mm -hmm. need to be, get serious about it. Yeah. Now, I'm thinking about my father and my brother, and I'm like, I don't want to do what they do. <laughs> yeah, and right, I, right. And I definitely don't want them to teach me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. Don't know what I'm <laughs> So, But Kenneth convinced me to get the camera, so I bought a 35 millimeter camera. And I said, okay, I'm not planning to take a class. I'm not that serious about yeah. this, but I'm going to make a commitment mm -hmm to carry this camera with me everywhere I go for a whole year. Mm. Mm. It lasted longer than a year. Mm. And I'm going to take 
pictures every day mm. in this year, mm. at least one. Mm -hmm. And the third part of that commitment was that if anybody during that year asks me to take their picture, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and take their picture. Mm. Okay. This is 1985. Okay. All right. I'm working by that and I was working for the EPA and their office was down in the loop and I lived in South Shore mm -hmm. and I had already given up a car so I was commuting on a bicycle that's why you know, mm -hmm. bicycle I ride gotcha. everywhere okay yeah. so I'm riding on a bicycle for that year with a camera hanging off my neck mm. from South Shore to downtown mm. and everywhere I went because sometimes I'd ride along the lake, sometimes I'd ride through the neighborhoods, and Chicago was off the chain back in yeah, the 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd ride through these neighborhoods, and invariably somebody would holler out at me, hey, take my picture. Yeah. Like, I don't, who asked? Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you walk around with a camera, now they want to be in yeah. front of it. Yeah, yeah, That's I know. So but funny. the 80s was a different time period. Yeah. And so I was constantly stopping at to take these pictures of these people that asked me to take their picture yeah. uh, all through the projects, all, all, all yeah. the neighborhoods, and they would pose. I take the picture. I never posed anybody and so mm -hmm. forth. So I, I ended up with thousands and mm. thousands mm. of photographs it's inspiration. of men because women never asked me to take their picture. Yeah, that's oh. a tough. Oh, I, I know. Yeah, I know. It's tough. Women it's do not do that. But a man, which I found out, all men are peacocks, mm -hmm. no matter what they look no like. Matter, no matter what, <laughs> what we all want to like, show off. You know, we <laughs> all want to, we all want to flex in some way, you know. And so I think in the '80s, the camera was a novelty mm -hmm. to see somebody uh, with a 35 millimeter camera. I think there were some other aspects that uh, by then most people had not had good photographs of right. themselves because right. the film and everything was not set up yeah. for yeah. for darker skin. And we also had in the 80s a phenomenon, the beginning of homelessness mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that, yeah. that had not existed before. So all of a sudden there were black men in the area on the streets that were homeless. Right. But when prior to that, they weren't. Right. Nobody. In fact, Reagan had brought in that change in Reaganomics yeah. and that <laughs> made all the factories close. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people were jobless yeah. when they used when Chicago used to be as a city where you always could get a job. Yeah. Now, People were jobless that led to homelessness. We also had a phenomenon of public housing mm -hmm. was at its zenith at that yeah. time. All these public houses, places, and then public housing, the the, the philosophy behind it shifted from support of families yeah. to short support of women with children. Right, mm -hmm. right. And so the man now becomes excess and right. he has to come out of the place, especially certain times of the month. So you had mm. a flux of young men yeah. that were pushed into the street. Right. We had also the beginning of house music, and so you had a whole right. new culture yeah. of yeah. people yeah. out there yeah. partying, doing raves, and all that other stuff. You also had the beginning of the drug culture. Yeah. And so people were uh, uh, on the streets selling mm -hmm. weed and so forth. So all of these phenomena were going on, and I'm riding a bicycle through this through, environment through yeah. <laughs> with a camera yeah. hanging yeah. over wow. my head. Yeah, right. <laughs> so all of these people are now uh, uh, asking me to take their pictures, so I ended up documenting wow. a, a lot. whole yeah. world, yeah. and it was a world pre-AIDS and pre-crack. Mm. So it was a different world. Yeah. I captured it, and then through all of that, those negatives, because I kept always kept the negatives. Yes, yeah, yeah. Threw them all in a box and sat on it for thirty years. Didn't wow, three it. decades wow. of pictures just sitting on ice. Wow. And then, so what was the time? When did you feel it was right to bring that out? Like I didn't. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, all right, right. Who's There's all kinds of co coincidences. Um, in two thousand and eight. See what happened. I stopped in nineteen ninety. Okay. Because the world changed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. AIDS hit, yep. and crack was hit. Right. Hitting. Crack was the one that stopped me from photographing because mm. I was riding a bike mm -hmm. with a camera. Right. Okay. When crack hit, you can't have nothing. You can't have nothing. They, anything is a item to be sold. Yeah. So taken. I was being yeah. robbed and stuck up and all all the time to the point I just said, forget it. Mm -hmm. I can't keep buying cameras. You know. Right. 
So I stopped in the 1990s and just sat on the, on the negatives till 2008. A friend of mine was a photographer. He was trying to talk to me about how great digital cameras were. And I'm like, I, you know, I was a film person. I want to do digital. And he said, oh, I have a way to digitize the mm -hmm. images that you have. And he said, yeah, he had gotten that Nikon film yeah. scanner, high end, so forth. He said, I'll let you use it. Yeah, reluctantly, I started, and then I seeing these images I haven't seen in 30 years. I was got, got excited, so I would start uh, scanning, scanning, scanning. So to, to the point, I had about 1,500 images that I wow. loved that I had scanned, and I put them on a CD, and I would give them out to artists. Yeah, I said, here, these are images that you can use. For your art practice. Well, that's wow. a, that's a, you are very wow. generous. Well, I'm an art, well, I was an art collector. Right, then. right. And I, so I, I knew all these artists and I knew how they, they function. They always need references. And so I gave my, my, my images, um, what they're called, like the gift project. Yeah. I just gave them out, gave them out to, wow. I'm still seeing people give me back uh, or showing me images that they did with their art practice using my images. Wow. So I had the CD. And uh, it, it, I became known that I was I had given these out. Well, in about 2012, I had a class came in to do my collection from the School of the Art Institute, and this girl was in that class, and she was going around and she saw some of my photographs because I used to have five by seven yep. I printed up of my photographs. She saw them and she said, "Oh, I really like this." And I said, "Yeah, I, these are mine." And I have a CD of them, and you want one? You know, so I gave her the CD. She lost her mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Changed, I would too. Yeah, <laughs> she changed her thesis for the, her, her. She changed the thesis. Uh, her thesis, and 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 put it about my photograph. Wow. And then got on a, a residency at the, the uh, Garfield. What was the? What's that? Thing? Incubator, uh, Arts Incubator. Yeah, on yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. She got one of those residencies, and she did her project was to um, project my images on scrims that were hanging from the ceiling oh, in wow. Rockefeller Chapel. And she had five scrims, and they were going, and then she had uh, this guy, he was mixing music yeah. while, while the, the things were being projected. So it was uh, really, really yeah. interesting. That's a uh, heck of a display, too. Yes, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Of my photograph. I was yeah. blown away. That, that, and people loved it. They were in the audience. They loved it. Because I had never thought about them as, as that, that people would gravitate and be interested in these photographs. They have a quality that I find now. Yeah. Because it was so real that people right. were asking to be photographed. So it wasn't me. Right. Mm -hmm. The intention right. wasn't coming from me. It was from them. You got the absolute raw moment of them. And they were they were giving me the images, the poses and so forth. I did not direct anything. Well, also them. too, you know, that time period, especially in the for a lot of minorities, not well documented. Yes, right. And and, and so to have something that authentic, documented, of course, that's, that's something that's that people. That's what happened. Yeah. That's exactly what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, that happened in like 2012. I still didn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. By chance, in 2016, I'm at an artist reception, talking and drinking the cheese, and drinking the wine and eating the cheese, talking to people. And there was the guy at the little circle that I was talking in, and he was saying what he was doing. Well, he was, was going to be an assistant curator for this show that was coming to Chicago, mm -hmm. Art Aids America, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the underground art movement that occurred in the 1980s uh, when Reagan and them just put the kibosh yeah. on any federal monies going right. to uh, support AIDS. So any art associated was, was, was verboten. So there was this whole undercurrent movement. And in 2016, they had started a show of that art that had been done in the 80s that spoke about AIDS. So we're talking, he's, he says, that the show that had started in Seattle, Tacoma, mm -hmm. there was a lot of controversy about it because it didn't reflect people of color, mm -hmm. and that these was you know people of color were yep. the most most impacted yep, right, right, and so right. forth. And he said that his challenge was to find 
people who did artwork and photography and so forth in the 1980s. And I said, well, I did. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a way to fall into that. Yeah. So I said, he said, you did? I said, yeah. I got all these uh, photographs that I took back in the, in the 80s. He said, could I see them? I said, yeah, come on. So he came by. I showed him the, the images. I had to, still had the CDs with the 1,500 pieces on it. He lost his mind. <laughs> he took some artwork to put into the show, because I even had artwork that had been done in that time period. Uh, and so they, my work was in the show. Wow. At the Alpha Woods Gallery in 2017. <laughs> this, I think, was the, it was some memorial t uh, period for, for AIDS. Mm -hmm. um, and in that show, they had five of my photographs. And during the opening, the keynote speaker, I didn't know she was a keynote speaker for the, for the <laughs> ceremony. She was being escorted around the show with a Tribune reporter. And she got stuck at my photographs, and she just started looking at them, stayed there, and I'm standing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> just like, look, what is she thinking? Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> she turned around, and she said, is this yours? And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, modest, huh? <laughs> and she said, these are the most impactful photographs in the wow. whole show. Wow. Dude. And so he wrote that up in the, in the Tribune article. Oh, yeah, like, you gave them a story right away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the course said, of the story, you know? <laughs> what's, that, what's that audio snippet? Yep. Yep. Put yep. that in there. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Leave that. <laughs> so um, that led to the people that would put on the show to push me and say, you know, you really need to think about doing a book. Mm. They do a book of your photographs because they asked me to make a presentation during one of the panels and stuff. And I described the whole experience of taking the photographs during that time period, riding a bike and so forth. And they said, you need to do a book. So John Neff, who was the one that discovered me, yeah. uh, he and I started working on a book. Mm. And we've been working on that for since 2017 because the, the photographs, I mean, the negatives, yeah. I had thrown in a box. Yeah. You got to keep those safe. I, but I had yeah. no rhyme or reason. They yeah. were just all a jumble. Yeah. I mean, a jumble. I mean, no organization. <laughs> I just threw them in there and just boxed it up. And so we spent about a year just trying to untangle that wow. stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And then, it, you know, I had not done contact sheets or nothing. Like, so we had to go through and look at each one of them. And so, so we've been working on that for several years. And uh, in uh, 2021, I think, we went to Alpha Woods, who had done the, the Arts AIDS America show, and asked them for assistance to uh, help with this book. And they said that they wouldn't give us anything for the book, but they would give us a show. Oh, wow. Okay. So That's still uh, opportunity, yeah, I guess. So, yeah. so that was last year, 2023. Yeah, 23. Uh, uh, the 651 Wrightwood, which is their new museum, they gave me one room, uh, and I put up, well, I got a curator, uh, Juarez Hawkins, and she selected <coughs> 52 images, and we put on a show called Take My Picture, because mm. it was all mm. of people mm. who asked me yeah. to take their mm. picture. And then we <coughs> have a lot of the background information about uh, that world right, in the right. 1980s. That then led to another show uh, at the Hyde Park Historical Society. Then that led to a show at Blanc Gallery uh, called At First Glance. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> wow, so this is just a snowball. It's just a snowball. It, wow. it, it snowball. Uh, at the Blanc show, one of my friends that had just gotten a job at the Lyric she came by to see the show, and she brought her supervisor. And at the show, they said, you know, we really like your photographs. It was, it was more to us coming just to see them. We want to ask you if you can put up your work wow. at the Lyric wow. for Champion and Aida. Wow. <laughs> wow. What a, what, a, what a journey for, for something that you were wow. just sitting on. And I still don't think of myself as a photographer. Now, look, we heard this story. You didn't think of yourself as a... <laughs> I don't think it matters what you yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, I don't... It don't matter what you think at this point, you know? <laughs> but for real, is it... Um, Do you still take photos? Or? No, yeah. no, that's what I'm no. saying. I stopped in 1990. Yeah. I haven't taken anything. It's so crazy that what 
30 years ago now, you were doing it, waited all this time, and now here you are reliving that, right. going through it again, and you haven't taken a picture since the 90s. You know what, you know what that kind of, I really love that idea. I, I love those stories always where people kind of like, because there's always like, oh, if you don't know what you want to do in your 20s, it's over. Yep. There's no more right. time. Right. You, yep. You could be 40, never. 50, 60, 70 and yeah, my, still live out a dream that you didn't even know you had. I, that, exactly. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't even know I was a photographer and had a dream for that. that. Like, but I'm, I'm yeah, fascinated just, now. Yeah. yeah. I'm fascinated by it, but I, I have no interest to do it. I think, <laughs> I think what, what it is is that, like, just, just sitting here talking with you, I feel like you're just such an authentic, like, you live right. your life mm -hmm. in such an authentic way to who you are, and you really like i don't know how to phrase this but like you almost are have no interest in living a life that is kind of like bland no not bland <laughs> like but like Directed. kind of like for other people in a way that like serves their purpose right. like you're exactly. doing if it if it if it fits who you are great mm -hmm. and if it doesn't you're not doing it right and i think that's why like great opportunities like that come to people like yourself because you live an authentic life because right. you have no interest in fabricating something mm -hmm. that isn't real That's that will you. just collapse in a second like someone can pull a string and it all goes away that's but right. this is really who you are that's right like so and i think that's why it's yeah so you, got, you hit it right on the head yeah because uh, people ask me well when about selling this artwork you know, you can make a lot of money. No, it's not about that. Right. That's not about, not about that. that. Yeah, it's not you about know. That. I mean, and I, and like I feel mm. like at this point, well, at some point in life, you realize that like if if your whole purpose is to chase money, you're never going to be yeah, fulfilled right. yeah, in yeah. any way possible. Yes. Yeah. Money Absolutely will right. come and go right. overnight. Yeah. That is not. Yeah. That's not life. Yeah, and I, I purpose. think. Yeah, I think looking at all the stuff that you have, there's a story behind a lot of this, and right. and yeah. and I know we. We don't have any intentions of giving anything away that we've gotten, you know. It's like for me, you know, it, it's a literally the thought process is I came from a lot of nothing, and and like, <laughs> <laughs> like I had a lot of that, an abundance of nothing, and and so now if I get anything, it's, it's those are and meaningful and impactful, and it's like I want to yeah. keep that just because even if I just want to look at it and just have that memory that it brought me back to, you right. know what I mean? Like it just feels good, yeah. you know, it just yeah. feels good. Can we see any of the other oh, yeah. space? I don't know what you well, what you want to show us. Hey, look. First of all, thank you for the time, the sit down time. Yeah, We're gonna walk real. around now and, uh, and uh, see. What I do, for this is for everybody that comes to the house. Uh, I let them walk around on their own, see what the oh. they want. Because okay. uh, I, just like the kids, I don't want to tell you what to look at. Right. You can look at go them. find out. Go find <laughs> out. Go find out. And it is themes, and I uh, usually once you go through it, <clears throat> and, and, and my house is really not set up today. For the the, the, the the kind of tours I normally do, but I will take you back through and show you and tell you what I was thinking about. With them. I'd love that. Well, that's yeah. what we're gonna do. Okay. Let's do it. There you have it. Thank you, Patrick McCoy, for allowing us into your home and spending uh, some time with us. Yeah, for real. Y'all. Uh, just, uh, what do you think? What a <laughs> he had. There's bars in there, yeah. and uh, again. I hope that we were as visual as possible with this and just listen to him tell stories and like explain, you know, yeah. like how art is to him from his right. from his angle and how you you look at art. Because like we know a lot of people, it's hard to like art. Yeah, but he makes it breaks it down easy where you can like yeah. art. Also, I, I agree. Also, uh, check the video because yeah. we we're gonna have that. Up. I was gonna say if you're interested in the visual, you can look at it on YouTube as always, um, or you can check our Instagram. I'll post some stories and we'll save it in our highlights for you to check it out. But definitely a very cool uh, visual episode if you want to go take a look at that and uh, see the tour of his home. But, you know, if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and send it to someone you love. Uh, let's support local Chicago stories. Our whole thing is about archiving these incredible Chicago people and their stories and this history so uh we would appreciate your support if you could share this episode with at least one person mm -hmm. uh, and if you did not enjoy this episode that's all right check back next week <laughs> or come back for a rerun on thursday yeah and we'll see those you been then. going great bye Thank you so 
much for listening to today's episode and we hope you loved it. And if you could please follow us on social media at 77 Flavors Shy on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. If you have any ideas or deep dives that you'd love us to do, please contact us at media at 77 flavors shy that's the number 77 flavors and shy for chicago.com if you like visuals please subscribe and follow and watch us on our youtube channel at the same thing 77 flavors shy or search 77 flavors of chicago if you would like to support us monetarily go ahead and click that bus sprout link in the description of this episode and as always We gon' see you next week. Peace.